Apple just launched its own containerization framework during the WWDC, so which is the annual developer conference by Apple. And everyone is asking the same question. Is this the end of Docker Desktop or Podman, which are two popular alternatives for virtualization on macOS? So let's quickly grab its features, its limitation right now and gets our hands dirty, of course. So the project is called Container, and I guess developers aren't as creative as salespeople at Apple. I mean, I'm not good at naming either. But still, if you go on their official webpage for uh, the announcement, actually, it's referred to containerization. And there is two repository. There is the containerization that is basically the core of the virtualization. And then you have the container, which is basically what developer is going to use, is the CLI to create the lightweight VMs. And one fun fact is that I know for sure AI didn't write this code because a PR was submitted to fix typo among, you know, variable name, as you can see, or comment in the code, which is like something an AI would never do. So kudos to you, Apple, for this handcrafted software. Anyway, under the hood, it's an open source uh, Swift framework. Also, another thing interesting is that this is under the Apache 2.0 license. And maybe you don't know, but Docker Desktop is no longer free for commercial usage for a while now. So if you are using it in the context of your work, well, you probably own money to Docker. And the interesting part, as I already said, is that it has his own Lightwell Linux virtual machine. So basically in a typical Docker desktop, you usually have one large uh, Linux virtual machine running in the background, even if you have no containers running. And that virtual machine is basically shared across all your container. And this architecture can introduce kind of a security risk in a sense because any files must go to uh, the shared virtual machine first and then only to your defined container. So here is what's happening and that is different with the container framework or containerization framework from um, Apple. Each container gets its own virtual machine. So this provides strong security and complete isolation. And each container gets even its own IP address, which means that you don't need any more to forward port when you want to access a local web service. For example, you just access directly the IP address of the container. And Apple claimed that the startup times is within sub seconds, which is pretty impressive. And we're going to test it directly. But for now, you need to be aware that under macOS 15, it works, but there is uh, a couple of limitations because this has been designed basically for macOS 26, which is still in beta and will be GA this fall. And yes, if you are confused about the version number, that's normal. Uh, Apple recently decided to basically align macOS version with the current year, uh, which makes the transition a bit confusing because we are jumping from macOS 15 to 26. <laughs> But hopefully in the future, things are going to be much clearer. And I just find it nice that you can tell when an operating system version has been released just by its name. Anyway, coming back to the limitation, if you look at uh, the readme network isolation, so container to container is not possible at the moment. So that's a big meh if you're using multiple container with a database and a web server. And the other uh, thing around the container IP addresses. Anyway, it's still really early on the framework. So if you want to try it, uh, you go to the container repository and you can go to release and just download the installer and you're good to go. So if you are familiar with Docker Desktop and Podman, you will feel right at home. Yes, it supports Docker file definition before you ask. So the first thing you need to do is just do a container system start to start the service and then you can do a container image pool let's say python and i'm gonna grab the version 12 so as always is downloading the image locally so it takes a bit of time and you have of course after we do a container run a container run download the image uh if it's not present locally and run the container directly i'm gonna do the same with docker i have docker install uh right here so i'm gonna do docker image pool python to war 11. So what is interesting is that I don't know why, but just pulling the image was much faster on 
the Docker desktop. And so, of course, you can do container image LS uh, if you want to see the, you know, the different image that you have uh, downloaded on containers. Really same. Anyway, let's just do a container run on the image that we just uh, downloaded and run a Python shell. We're gonna do exactly uh, do the same with uh, with Docker. And notice that in the demo they did, they use uh, Alpine image, which is, you know, really lightweight. I think here with a Python runtime, you're a bit, you know, more close to inspect what's consuming uh, each of those resources. So let's do now to the activity monitor. I'm gonna look for uh, Docker. And if you see for Docker, I have a bunch of stuff uh, running. There is a large VM, as I said, that takes, you know, 3.5 uh, gigabyte of RAM and it's, it's on CPU. And if I go to container, which is uh, this, I have also a couple of things. I'll put it to the Docker the page that we just saw, but clearly as you can see that the container footprint in general is much smaller. But Remember here, the large VM machine that we have for Docker that's desktop will be shared around all your containers. So you still have an overhead each time you add basically a container on the containerization Apple framework. But that being said, I doubt you're gonna reach like the same value of the baseline because usually you have two or three container maximum running at the same time. Anyway, that's it for the quick end zone. However, there are multiple things, as I said, the project is still a read that are missing. For example, how multi-container uh, workflow will work. Will Docker Compose uh, be supported? If you use dev container with cursor or VS Code, uh, how will the integration look? And I'm imagining this heavily for every project. So really hard at the end of the day to really use it right away today. But it is a really exciting news. And is it said that Apple is finally owning officially a containerization framework and performance wise, they can work really as close as uh, the native API. So yeah, definitely something to watch out for when uh, Mac OS 26 will be GA by the end of this fall. Anyway, that's it for this one. Take care of your container and I'll see you in the next one.